How are you guys this morning? I'm glad to be here. You know, things don't always go the way we want them to. But we're not here for perfection because we serve the perfect creator God who loved us, who loves us, and who makes it possible for us to worship him, who makes it possible for us to fellowship with each other. If you've got a Bible, if you turn to Luke chapter 22, Luke 22, beginning in verse 14. You know, Jesus did what no one else could do. Jesus gave his life for sin. He gave his life for humanity, and he was the only one that God deemed worthy to carry the weight of the world's sin to death. That makes him not only super, super special, but only God could do that. And so Jesus is the only son of God who came in the flesh. What I find extremely interesting is that, that Jesus handpicked a, a group of guys called the disciples, the apostles, and they walked with him and they, they learned from him and he taught them and, and they taught others and, and they, they ministered and they witnessed and, and they, they did the work of God alongside the Savior. And one of those guys was Judas. So there were 12 disciples, but there were 13 disciples, or 13 apostles, if you will. Because Judas, even though he walked side by side, even though he took part of, of all of the ministry that, that was made available to him, his heart was never changed. He just walked with a guy. He walked with a dude. Jesus, the dude, would be what Judas would say because he, he had no, no true relationship and true idea and concept of what it meant, meant to be a true follower of Christ. He didn't know what it meant to have a, a, a heart that would be changed in salvation by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I want to begin reading in verse 14 of Luke chapter 22, and I'm going to end this part with Judas. So just bear with me. When the hour had come, he, that is Jesus, reclined at the table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I shall never again eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And when he had taken the cup and given thanks, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink the fruit of the vine from now until the kingdom of God comes. And then he had taken some bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup and after he had eaten, saying, This cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. For behold, the hand of the one who is betraying me is mine on the table. For indeed, the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the testimony of Scripture. Father, above all, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the price that he paid for us. Thank you for his willingness, even when it seemed like it was the darkest hour. Father, that he, he gave us all. He'd be put on a cross with nails, with a crown of thorns for me, for us, for all who would believe. God, I pray this morning that we would we'd personalize this and internalize this because he did it for us. 
In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The song goes, if he carried the weight of the world, I know Jesus will carry me. And yet one who walked so close to him missed. Missed salvation. Missed eternity with Jesus. Judas would go off and he would hang himself. He basically sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And yet reclining at this table, getting ready to, to, to eat a, a supper, the last supper, he followed through with the plan of God. You know, there's nothing magical about the grape juice. If it were wine, there'd be nothing magical about it either. There's nothing magical about the cracker. And if they were bread, there'd be nothing magical about the bread. It's a, a pure representation of what Jesus just spoke about, that he was going to, to give his body to be broken, to be put to death for you. And the grape juice and the wine that is represented is his blood that is poured out, that was, that was shed on that cross when they put the spear in his side and they, they ran the crown of thorns on his head as the blood flowed. And so when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we remember what he did for us. We not only remember, but I hope we remember what he accomplished. That he fulfilled the eternal purpose of God to bring redemption, to bring salvation, to bring hope to all who would believe, to everyone that professes Jesus Christ as Lord. So when we eat this cracker in our minds what if we just did this what if we just said Lord thank you thank you for giving me you and when we drink the cup saying Lord Jesus thank you for for, for what this represents thank you for the blood that you shed for me see in the Old Testament they would have to kill animals to provide a blood offering to, to satisfy God's commands. And Jesus, when he came and when he died on that cross and when he, he resurrected from that tomb and when he ascended into heaven, he did away with the need for that ever again. God would never and will never demand another blood sacrifice because Jesus paid it all. We have sung that song the last two Sundays at the end of the service, that Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. If you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then all of your sin belongs to Jesus. There's no sin he won't forgive. There's no sin he'll remember that's been forgiven. Because he took all of that with him. And he says that when you profess and confess Jesus as Lord, you would be saved. And with that salvation comes a clean slate. How many of you remember the whiteboards? I, I remember chalkboards. Remember the chalkboards? Well, I remember being a, a wonderful student that would be asked to clean the, white, the, the chalkboards of of all of the chalk because I was such a wonderful student. And so I'd be given a, a, a sponge or sometimes just a cloth and it would have some water and I'd have to go and I'd have to, have to wipe, you know, all of the, the, all of the chalk off the, the chalkboard. And, and once it was done to that awesome teacher's demands, I would step back and I'd go, wow, that looks brand new. And then they came out with the whiteboards. And I, I was way too old to have to clean whiteboards, or I probably would have had to clean the whiteboards as well. But you'll see writing, and you'll see different colored markers, and then all of a sudden they'll just take a, a towel or a sponge, and they'll just wipe across. And if they're good at it, they'll make it like it's brand new. And it'll shine, and, and it have a little reflection on it, and... It's clean to be used again, and that's what God does for us. He says, I'm going to take all of those marks, 
all of those stains and I'm going to wipe it clean. And every time you come to me and you confess your sin to me, I will be faithful and just to forgive you of all your sin and unrighteousness. So every time we confess that we're sinners, ask Jesus to forgive us of our sin, it's as if he's wiping that, that whiteboard or that chalkboard clean. That's what he does for us. And that's what we're remembering this morning. When we partake of the Lord's Supper, we're acknowledging that he paid the ultimate price for us to be clean, for us to be forgiven, for us to be saved. And, and ultimately, with that comes the greatest gift of all, a, a relationship, an intimate relationship with him, with the Father and with the Holy Spirit, with God. And so one thing the Lord's Supper is not, the Lord's Supper is not for those who are not believers. It's not for the unsaved. Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians. He talks about, about the need to, to recognize and, and partake only if, if you're in the family of God. And it doesn't mean anything other than this, that God welcomes you. He desires to have a relationship with you. He wants everyone to be saved. He wants everyone to know him in an intimate and personal way. But that's what equates acknowledging and recognizing the significance of the Lord's Supper. If not, it's just eating a cracker and drinking Concord grape juice. Jesus said in verse 16, For I say to you, I shall never again eat until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And when he, he ate, and when they, when they ate, and, 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 and when they drank, and, and when Judas betrayed him, notice, notice in verse 21, Behold, the hand of the one betraying me is with mine on the table. The guy that would ultimately hand him over to to the Pharisees, to the Romans, to the religious leaders, was sitting at the exact same table as Jesus. Jesus' hand was probably on the table, and and Judas' was right there with him. And even though it would be a, a very dark time for the apostles and for Jesus, knowing that someone who walked so close with with him and interacted with the apostles that he would be so callous as to betray him and yet that's what he did and yet Jesus in the midst of this he didn't he didn't say yet he he didn't say anything other than the guy that's going to betray me is here let's eat let's drink See, because there's, there's a, a remembrance factor in the Lord's Supper. It's remembering who Jesus is, ultimately, but it's also remembering who we are. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Christians, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Non-believers, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that price is death. But Jesus said, this represents your freedom. This represents your, your escape from eternal separation from God and eternity in hell. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. In verse 19, it says, And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He's saying, remember, remember me. 
not just now, but remember who I am. But you know, part of remembering who he is is, is remembering who he is to me. Because he is who he is. He will always be who he is. He will always and always has been God. And yet what does, what does Jesus mean to you? Who is he in your life? Paul, and again in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says, um, don't partake of, the, of this in an unworthy manner. That basically... Take stock of, your, of yourself. Do a, a self-checklist, a spiritual checklist, a God checklist, if you will. And then go before God and, and ask him to forgive you of your sin so that when you partake and you eat and you drink, that you have put yourself in the place that God wants you to be to remember And so I'm going to ask if you'll just quiet your hearts, bow your heads, if you will. And I would like to lead us in a word of prayer. And some music is going to start here. Evelyn's going to play the piano for a couple minutes. And then the praise team is going to sing. And I just want you to just to, to be, be quiet or allow God to quiet your heart. Go ahead, Evelyn, start playing. You can ask him this morning to forgive you of your sin. You can ask him to come into your heart and save you. Lord Jesus, save me. I know I'm a sinner. I believe you have the power to save and to forgive. And so God, this morning I do that. But maybe there's something that's keeping you from, from worshiping him this morning. Maybe you're a believer and there's just something in your life, something in your path that is keeping you and blocking you. Say, Lord, God, I don't know how to get rid of this, but God, I confess it to you as sin. Forgive me of my sin. As King David would say, restore to me the joy of my salvation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So just listen prayerfully, if you will. Crucified, laid behind the stone, you live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose trampled on the ground. Above all wonder the world is in. 
to die, rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me above all, like a rose, trampled on. come forward at this time. A simple cracker, and yet it signifies so much. As I've read, this symbolizes the body that was broken for you. We just sang, there is none like Jesus. He took something this simple and said, this represents and will represent for all time what I did for you. Ryan, would you ask the Lord to bless? Lord, we just come before you today. We just are so thankful for your sacrifice for us. And that your body was broken to pay for our sins. Let us never take that for granted, Lord. Just help us to remember what you did so that we can live in eternity with you. In Jesus' name. Amen.
when they broke bread, Jesus said, take and eat in remembrance of me. And then he took a cup. And he said, this represents my blood. And when you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. Charles, would you ask the Lord to bless this cup? said when you drink this do this in remembrance of me I remember one of the most memorable Lord's Supper that I ever was a party of was at Victory Bible Camp in, a, in outside of Anchorage Alaska it was just a youth camp and we just had big loaves of bread and they pass around these big loaves of bread and we tear off the bread and we pass it on, and then there would be a, just one big pitcher, and we'd take a drink. So we would never do that now. <laughs> but that's always been so memorable for me. Scripture says that they, when they were finished, they sang a song, and they went their way. So I'm going to ask if you'll stand, and we're going to sing Jesus Lord to me. Thank you for being here this morning. We took an offering, right? We did that already. Hey, too much time has flown by. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. <laughs> Let's sing.